Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to talk to you about the only dialysis device that filters the kidney 24/7, uh, the blood 24/7. Your God-given kidneys works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's 168 hours of filtration. No wonder that if you filter the blood only 12 hours a week, like we do in the uh, uh, regular dialysis clinics, the, uh, the outcomes are poor. They're poor in terms of the misery of the patients, their complications, hospitalizations, and quality of life. Uh, we miniaturize the device to develop a wearable. We have several patents. We also have data. We have bench, animal, and human data that have been published in peer-reviewed papers. So I'm proud to say I have a paper in Lancet with my own data on a human trial. We did a human trial in Italy. We did a human trial in London. We did another human trial in Seattle. And the technology worked. And if it worked in Italy and the UK and here, the technology works. We're trying to develop uh, uh, two applications with the same components. One is a, a therapy for critically ill patients for, uh, in the battlefield, uh, where uh, you have to provide renal replacement to critically ill patients that uh, have been injured and cannot easily be evacuated. And we got funding from the US Army uh, to do that. And uh, we have a, that will be a 510K. Uh, our wearable product has been the winner of an award by FDA for innovation. And we also got a letter of support from the FDA for our project. We expect to do the trial for the military application in Cedar Sinai. And we uh, will do the next two trials in humans in the United States, in Vanderbilt, and in the Brigham uh, in Harvard, Boston. Uh, the Medicare reimbursement is guaranteed by law, and we're trying to raise uh, $10 million. Uh, the cost of dialysis is enormous. The, uh, uh, it's about $88,000 per patient per year, if you do the math. Uh, our economic impact to Medicare will be enormous. And the fact that if you develop a molecule, a device, you don't know if Medicare is going to pay for it. We met with Medicare, they will pay for it, and they may even pay more than what they would pay for regular dialysis technologies today. The margins we show at this time are about 70%, and we do have a pipeline product uh, in pediatrics, military, intensive care, and cardiac. The business model is razor and blades, of course. Uh, the uh, Medicare reimbursement covers both the consumables and the, uh, and the device itself. Uh, and it will disrupt mature markets that have been basically doing the same thing with stationary machines for about five or six decades. It's time to come up with a better thing. Uh, as you can see in the upper, um, in the upper left level here, uh, we have what the dialysis looks today. And the patients are tethered to the machine and they want freedom. So uh, when you filter the blood 24-7, you remove enough fluid from the patient to allow them to eat and drink what they want. Our human data indicates that, indicate that we also remove enough salt to allow patients to eat salt normally, which patients on dialysis cannot do today. Uh, the savings in drugs that our data already support that will uh, be in Medicare reimbursement uh, of drugs is enormous. We make, for instance, one drug obsolete, it's phosphate binders, and if we make that drug obsolete, 
the savings to the taxpayer are in the order of the $6 billion a year, which is what we pay today for phosphate binders alone. Uh, there is many more advantages in quality of life, mortality to the patients with our device. Uh, typically, when you dialyze with current machines, you require about 40 gallons of fresh water per treatment. We use only 300 cc. Uh, you dialyze continuously, which is the only way to remove enough toxins that accumulate in renal failure and make patients very ill. If you continue dialyzing only a few hours a week, those toxins are not removed and they have very deleterious effects on the patients themselves. Uh, this slide basically indicates that we miniaturize the dialysis device very much like uh, computers were uh, miniaturized to a phone today. Uh, we started with the first trial in Cedar sinai in pigs. Uh, then uh, we did our first trial in Italy with uh, Professor Ronco, a well-known famous guy. Uh, the lady uh, on the right upper quadrant uh, that uh, is dancing is wearing the device. This picture was published in Lancet. And why do I say that? Because we underwent data scrutiny of our trial uh, in the Lancet, Kidney International, JCI, and a few others. And we did also a trial in London uh, with uh, Professor Davenport uh, that uh, you see some pictures of that in the lower uh, uh, slide. Uh, our device, Model 3, it will look something like the pictures there. You can wash and shower with it, and uh, you can walk around with it. We have an experienced team. Uh, we manufacture our devices in a large FDA certified um, a facility for medical devices in San Diego. Uh, we have an excellent group of uh, advisors from Harvard, uh, London Royal Free Hospital, Vanderbilt, University of Connecticut, Beth Israel, UCLA, and University of Virginia. Uh, I hope that people are awake at the end of my discussion, and I would love to have questions if somebody has some. Here in Nan, our collaborators are several all over the place, and I'm done. Thank you so much.